I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua, and today we don't have the happiest of shows. I don't know that anyone was hurt, so before anyone panics, but we did have a major fire down here in Las Penitas, and we just made it down uh, to see the remains of it, so I'm going to bring you a little information about that and talk about the culture of trash burning here in Nicaragua. We were at home wrapping up some normal filming, doing my normal work day. It's Friday that I'm recording this. And as we were wrapping things up, we got sent pictures from Las Penitas that the Nile Lodge, which is the very first hotel on the beach there at the north end, right as you come onto the beach and uh, they have twin towers, they're really well recognized. It's not a very popular place because it's very small, but uh, we had some of the people who worked for us in the past have worked there, so we know it really well and it's on the same beach that we live on. So we, we're pretty familiar with it. And apparently a trash fire was going on nearby and the fire leapt to the building and caught the hotel on fire. All right, I'm doing an update because later in the day we got more information and we have some idea of what has gone on down at the Nile Lodge with the fire. So the first thing is uh, we got the reports from the newspaper. So we do know that no people, no humans died in the fire. Um, but uh, the newspaper reported that it was a kitchen fire that spread through the building. We did get other footage that shows um, a bit of what happened with the fire today. Okay, so we have some updates to this story and I wanna provide a, a bit more information. As you can see here, we managed to obtain some footage of the fire as it happened. We're gonna a little bit more at the end of the video as well. This is kind of the best footage we've seen. As you can see, the fire started at the back uh, away from the road and as it was burning the winds are just unbelievable and they whipped the fire forward and it leapt over the pool area it leapt. they have a bit of a fire break there and it just went right over but you can see the flames are just ridiculously high um, and the, the heat of course coming off of a fire that burns that fast is just it's going to light things and so right now in the video you can see that it's just at the back it's just the the side building which i believe is the restaurant and the the regular hotel rooms um, and the house of the owners um, that that's what's on fire and then there's a pool kind of where the tree is beside that is a pool area it's kind of open and you would expect that a fire would struggle to go over that and probably if there wasn't high winds it might not but the uh, if you you can see the roofs in front now the roof on the right that you just see come into the picture now and then that's actually a preschool it's not part of the hotel there's a road it's part of the hotel it's like a driveway in between so the things that are on this side of the, the viewer's side of the driveway survive the fire, but everything that's on the far side of the driveway that's with the ranchos that are burning um, does not. And so um, I wanted to provide this, one, because we want you guys to see the news and, and know what's going on. And some of our viewers were actually booked to stay here at Nile um, and it is no longer there. So while this is filming, um, a bit of misinformation. So as you watch a video, this portion of the video is the is the last thing that I recorded and I'm adding it to it just before I upload. And um, so we've been told a bit of information. When it first happened, we were told it was a trash fire, which is why that's the topic of this video. Um, and then we were told it was uh, by La Prensa, which is a rogue newspaper that runs out of the United States. And if you go to their website, like pretty quickly, it feels like a tabloid. Like you just look and feel it does a bunch of things to block translation, like it's really sketchy. So if you look at that, like real quickly, be like, okay, there, this is not probably what a legitimate news source looks like. Um, but they reported that it was a kitchen fire almost immediately. And uh, I want to read Niall Lodge's um, retort that came out this morning on Instagram, and I'm gonna to try to link a bunch of things, including the GoFundMe for Nile Lodge. They have a GoFundMe that the Aki Hotel is running for them. This is a legitimate GoFundMe. Nile Lodge has repeated it. You can go to the link on their Instagram, which I'll try to put in the thing as well, so you know that it's not coming from me or just from the Aki Lodge. The actual Nile Lodge themselves is repeating it as, as a real thing, but the, um, uh, and they reached out to to our all of our 
um, facilities as well and, and asked for uh, to get the information out. So they, on their Instagram, which you can go to, show pictures of the lot behind them um, and how it was all burned and burning prior to the hotel burning. And what the, the Nile Lodge says, is, this is in Spanish but translated, please stop posting fake news. The fire is not created at Nile, as it is said in La Prensa, but in the burning of garbage of a closed lot that is 200 meters from us and the hurricane winds have done the rest. That's not a reference to an actual hurricane. It's a hurricane force winds. Um, the very painful, uh, everything that has happened and they try to harm us more, we will not tolerate it. Um, so, and, and you can see, I mean, the area that is burned uh, in the empty lot where the wind had to come from and not go to is extensive. It's a, an entire lot was burned, uh, which I don't have a video that I can share of that, but the link to the video on Instagram, I will make sure is down below uh, for you guys. And you can see the, the roofs have caught on the front towers and they go so fast. There's so much wind um, and those towers have, have an air pass through. So uh, it's meant to keep it cool, logical, right? That's you the wind comes across and it sucks the hot air up and that keeps it nice and cool in those towers. Each tower is an individual uh, like hotel unit, like a suite. Um, so that's not a set of, of hotel rooms. It's one large multi-story room uh, in each tower. So two of them. Um, and both the roofs caught at about the same time and were gone in a minute. It was so fast that it took all of that and you can see the fire department's there they're spraying water but they they just weren't able to get ahead of it they weren't able to to actually stop it they were able to keep the concrete from being being completely destroyed but uh, it could be it could be a total loss it is very difficult uh to imagine that they're going to be able to recover anything from what's there it's i assume it's all got to be bulldozed um and if something is going to go in there which is a big if will be um, starting from scratch. And that's that's one of the toughest things. So the owners, um, Jose and Kata, I actually don't know them. And they're probably gonna pop on here and be like, you do know us, we met somewhere. Uh, I don't know them by name and I've never been introduced to them as the owners of the Nile. So I actually don't know them. Um, but uh, we know that they lost their home. We know that they lost their pets in the fires. This is incredibly tragic. Um, just a huge disaster and of course impacting the beach and the community as well this is it's not a large employer but it's a number of jobs are now lost um, a bit of capacity for the beach has been lost uh, which is important in a beach that has so little overall uh, but my guess and the guess of most people i know is that um, the the financial burden of rebuilding at a time when the hotels are, are essentially all taking a loss and and being profitable is all but impossible it feels unlikely that they will rebuild the hotel i've not heard anything from them uh, but really the gofundme is is most likely targeted towards just finding them a, a way to be able to live because uh, this is their home that is gone not just uh, the business that they had the business may or may not have been uh, supplementing them. It may have been a burden uh, for many years. So the the financial logistics of, of rebuilding a hotel in that spot may be uh, um, difficult, uh, but maybe. I, you know, I haven't spoken to them. Um, it's not someone that I know well, so I, 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 we're only speculating, but that's a very real possibility. But the GoFundMe definitely um, is, is aimed towards their short-term short-term short -term needs and uh, being able to find a place to live um, and and move forward right now, uh, as obviously this is a uh, major tragedy that has happened. But I'll link everything that I can down below, and I wanted to provide you guys with the most up-to-date and accurate and complete information possible. And so uh, our information at this point and all evidence and all initial information points to it having been a trash fire that got out of control. And it is, it's hard to tell how bad it is, but there are are clearly police from all over the place. Fire departments from all over the place are here. So this is a major fire. And we have a brand new fire department here in Nicaragua, here in Nicaragua, of course. We have a new one in Leon, but we have a new one here in Las Panitas right next to the lodge. So, I mean, it could not have been I mean, one or two buildings, but that was about as close as it could possibly be for response time. We have two fire trucks there, but they needed, I think, seven. Uh, so we've seen a number that have come in from Leon some have already returned. It's about five o'clock now. I talked to a buddy of mine, Josue, who was down there, and he said that the, the fire started, they think, around two o'clock. And uh, 
So it's out now, but it's there's still a bit of smolder. It is a lot of damage. It's uh, the two towers heavily damaged, and I can't tell how far back, but you can see that it has burned way back over the pool into the other structures that they have. So it looks like it's a, it's a pretty significant amount of damage. So here in Nicaragua, there is a culture of taking trash and burning it. And there's a reason for this. It makes a lot of sense in a lot of cases. Having a lot of trash, and, and Nicaragua produces, simply because it's in the tropics, an awful lot of very dry, flammable material. It is part of the leaves falling. It is part of the, the coconuts and fruit. And so everywhere you go, and I'll just point out, you can see it behind me, right on the ground. There's a lot of sun that is cooking, foliage that falls, and because it's a tropical, tropical jungle kind of location, you get a ton of palm fronds. You get a ton of leaves. You get a ton of just little things and they're dry or they will dry once they've fallen. And it's really important to not have them accumulate because if you have them accumulate, you end up with a couple of different problems. One is that they, they get dry and they become a fire hazard. So you got to do something about it. And also they are an attractor for insects like tarantulas, scorpions, things like that. So in some cases that's fine, but in some it's something you have to deal with. And just as an example, I'm coming by Unan, the university. This is their, their uh, aquaculture research center. And you'll notice that we have fire spots out here. This is where they collect the foliage from around this area and they burn it there away from buildings so that it's very safe. But that's, you have to burn that stuff to keep it clear or it's gonna kill all the ground cover and create a fire hazard. So it is something that culturally becomes very important and it's just something that everyone does. And it's really common to go through little villages, go anywhere, right? And you'll see people out raking up the road, raking up their yard into little piles and having these little tiny fires all through the city, all through the country, every day. It's a continuous thing. And after a while you get used to it, but it is a real shock at first. Now I grew up in Western New York in the seventies and eighties and we burned our trash. We didn't have trash collection or anything like that. So you had to do something with your trash and setting it on fire was the only practical thing, collecting it over a long period of time, putting it in a truck that you probably didn't have, driving to a different county to unload it. Like there was always a lot of complications to dealing with trash. So we did the same thing back in the day. That they do it here, it's not surprising at all. It's just practical. Now, today there's a lot more trash than just leaves, but that's where it comes from. If you look at any view taken of Leon from the sky, and this is true for basically any city out here, but Leon we see all the time, whether you're up on a mountainside nearby or taking a shot from a drone, you're going to notice smoke rising in little bits all over the place. This is almost always the trash fires. And it, it's just part of what Nicaragua looks like. And it is something that over time, it'd be really nice if we could address, but for the time being, from a practical standpoint, there's no easy way to reduce it. So it's something you kind of have to accept and it definitely becomes just a part of normal life. You don't really think anything about it under normal circumstances. Now, that being said, it does have its problems and it does contribute to a lot of the dust in the air. So we'd really love to get rid of that. There's a lot of reasons why it'd be good not to have it. It'd just be better for the environment if we didn't do it. So. That's a place where we could see some improvement in the future for sure. We'd love to see that, but one thing at a time. For now though, one of the things you have to realize is that tons and tons of the country is on fire at any given moment. It's almost always dry. There's almost always a bit of wind. There's almost always quite a bit of sun and nearly everywhere, okay, not quite everywhere, but an awful lot of the country is made out of what we call ranchos. Now you, have probably not heard this term in reference to roofing material because most places call it a palapa, but here in Nicaragua, they are called ranchos and they're very popular. This is the North Pacific anyway. So we're in the same kind of zone as Hawaii. And uh, when you see one like this one behind me, you'll realize, oh, that's what I think of as a tropical roof in a lot of cases. And if I turn around, I don't know if you can see them, but that's one out by the water right there. So they're absolutely everywhere and you expect to see them all the time. And they are incredibly flammable. They are very dry and they're basically made out of kindling for all intents and purposes. So when you have one and a spark gets to it, possibly from a trash fire, that's a major concern. So that is something that 
everyone is terrified of all the time. Uh, all it takes is one person throwing a cigarette off of somewhere, landing on someone's roof, and you have a major problem. So it's something that's just, it's just part of Nicaraguan culture to be aware of this, to know that you have to deal with it, to be very, very conscientious of where fires are. So it's a tough thing that we have this combination of an incredible number of fires and an incredible number of businesses and homes that are built under roofs that are very, very flammable. Now, the upside is generally they go up quite quickly. They're easy to control. It's easy to put them out. It's easy to get them off the building. Sometimes they'll just tear them right off and uh, get them away from the rest of the structure. And when you tear them off when they're old, if you're they're not a fire, but you actually take them off, you just put them into a big file and have a bonfire with your roof. That's actually what they do. They actually have roof burning parties here, because I'm in, in Las Penitas on the beach. They'll take the roofs off the hotels when they put on a new one, pile it all up on the beach, light the whole thing on fire, and the community gathers around for a roof burning. And it's kind of like a neighborhood bonfire back in New York. So it's a really funny thing when it's being done on purpose. My original plan for filming today was to come out to Las Penitas and do a walk on the beach or along the beach road for you guys, because I haven't done this in Las Penitas in a really long time. I've done one or two videos in isolated spots, but I haven't done a long beach walk in years. I don't know when the last time is that I did. I did a ton of them in 2021. If you go back and watch my episodes from then, and I hope all of you are taking some time to watch the old episodes for sure, that really does help the show. But those are pretty old now. We're talking almost three years ago that I was filming a lot of those like discovering the beach videos and I hadn't mastered a lot of the GoPro. I say that as if I've mastered it now, but I, I was certainly new to the whole vlogging and GoPro thing at the time that I was doing that. And now I rarely get a chance to come out with the cameras in the daylight and have access to the beach to go walking all over the place. Like I just rarely get that chance. So that I was able to do it today, I was all like, yeah, I'm gonna go out and do that. And then there was a fire and Paul grabbed me and is like, you coming down to do pictures? I'm like, yes, let's go. So we jumped in and ran down to check it out. So I am getting a nice walk along the beach road. We can't bring the car down to go to Nile because they have the whole road is blocked off so because there's so many fire trucks and so many uh Cruz Blanca which is uh, the white cross that's who handles the ambulances here now so any of your EMTs and ambulance services that's all the white cross so they had a lot of vehicles down here I'm hoping that that was just for safety you know better safe than sorry uh, I'm not aware that anyone was hurt in the fire but that doesn't mean that they weren't but I have not heard from anyone and I knew a number of people down there so likely I would have heard if uh, if something actually tragic had happened. Like it's it's tragic that a hotel burns, but there's a, you know, it's just a building that can be that can be rebuilt. I have no idea how bad. My guess is that there's a lot of structural damage. I got a good look at that. There was so much fire and so much water. It's hard to imagine the concrete not being affected. Luckily, concrete structures tend to weather those things pretty well, but. You never know, but there's a lot of wood structure behind. That is definitely all lost. The roofing is lost, the rooms are lost. And as someone mentioned, oh, I bet they did it for the insurance money. Well, I can tell you there's, there's no insurance here. People don't have insurance, which when nothing bad happens, that's really good. You don't wanna be putting money into insurance that you then don't get back. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but when something bad happens, well, then there's no system for dealing with it other than you've been able to put away the money you would have put into insurance and have that saved up for a rainy day. So here you use rainy day funds instead of group insurance. And for the most part, that gets you much better results, but it depends. Now in a case like this, they may be okay. Maybe the person who set the place on fire is going to be responsible for some amount of paying for it, but that's going to be very tough. Most likely the person who caught it on fire doesn't have any funds to deal with that at all. Maybe they do. It's hard to know, but the area that they're in, it's either one of the other businesses, all of which have been losing money for a decade, or one of the neighbors who are almost certainly incredibly poor. So the, the chances that anybody has financial resources to do anything of like repair the structure, pay for damages, it's pretty low, unfortunately. And that's that's just harsh reality. Well, we'll be interested to see what's gonna happen down there. Is that a property that's even going to reopen? It's been losing money like everyone else, I'm sure, for a very long time. This house has actually had some work. I used to walk by this all the time. I'm sure you guys have seen it. It seems like they've done some, some upgrades, but 
like all the businesses here, right, everyone's losing money, have been for a really long time, and they only stay open so that they can manage to keep advertising going or be open for the really busy days. Well, they're now closed for Semana Santa. That's the busiest week of the year, and there's no way they can open in the next two weeks for that. So that's out of the question. It reduces the capacity on the beach. Uh, it's only a few rooms, but there are only so many on the entire beach to lose that at Semana Santa's impactful here in Las Penitas. And uh, my guess is pretty much any business that goes through that here, whether it's eight, hey, whether it's permanent or just long term, it's very likely that they will not be reopening. So we'll see. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting to know if they begin construction or just wrap the place up. But it was meant to be a hotel front end for a housing development that never sold a house. And so the development's empty. Thankfully, there's no, no one living in there. No other houses were affected. But it's also a business that never took off. It was a failed business from the beginning. And then it got hit with the, the drop in tourism. So even as a hotel, it's basically always empty. It's always locked. They advertise a restaurant, but there's no walk-ins. So I've never been able to figure out how they get people to eat there or like we lived on the beach. I've never seen them open. I, they never appear like an operating business. And I lived here for years and I know some people go there. I know some people who've worked there. So I know that they exist, but it never makes it seem like a place you can go into. So it's, uh, it's interesting to think of them as a potential viable business. So with this, my personal guess is that we won't see them reopen, but you never know. Maybe, maybe they have a long-term vested interest. Maybe they have investors who have deep pockets and then they're just not concerned about the financial viability or whatever. So it's gonna be interesting to watch. You'll see it here on the channel. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller that helps support everything we do here on the show. Thanks for coming along on a little walk and doing something a little bit different and unexpected today. Obviously, share on social media, tell your friends about the show, and I will see all of you tomorrow. <laughs> And I'll pop up on the screen for your convenience four awesome additional videos that if you like this one, pop on to one of those and go explore the history of the vlog.